Hey, look, someone re someone posted a thing about it. What's this? Bing.com. You don't play this. You experience it. No, I didn't write that, so that's somebody else's thing. By Roast Doom. Alright, folks, it's Roast Doom here. And I've got something very different for you today. This is um, Doom on an acid trip, basically. It's called Starhaven Getting High in the Afterlife. So, so what is Starhaven exactly? Well, it is a mod, a Doom mod. Probably the trippiest mod I've ever played. It also plays basically like a TC, total conversion. So, um, all the weapons, enemies, and power-ups. Well, someone actually, uh... I was getting nervous here. Because, look, let me go back to the forum. Where... I mean, the Doom community is... There we go. You know, the, the Doom community, they're all about the violence and the gore and everything like that, but see... I... can't believe this. Zero replies. Zero. Huh. Basically line up exactly with Vanilla Doom, but... Uh, don't get it twisted, this is... miles away from anything Vanilla Doom. <laughs> Now, Getting High in the Afterlife is a completely new story-driven single-player map set uh, just released um, with its own characters, lore and story beats. Oh, and most importantly, this is all brought to you by Spaceline88. Spaceline88 is a very artistic uh, creator indeed. Um, so this mod has a very unique art style, which I quite dig. Now, thematically, Starhaven itself is a spiritual realm between worlds where traumatized souls end up. You, as the player, will fluctuate randomly between physical places and spiritual realms, just like ghosts often do in real life. As with many ghosts in real life who don't know they're dead, the environment becomes a dreamlike place of illogical architecture. The basic premise, however, is that you take on the role of a spiritual light worker, transgressing various light dimensions that are populated by workaholic souls who don't know how to relax. As a light worker, you have to blast wandering thought forms with mental clarity energy that forces them to take a step back and take a nap and reassess the situation. Those were Space Line 88's words, by the way, not mine. So yes, you heard that right. All the weapons are basically light weapons and you have to uh, use them to spiritually or magically heal all of the tormented souls in the game. Now the monster replacements are some of the most varied, bizarre things I've ever seen as well. Uh, just you wait. <laughs> Now, before we go any further, I do need to give a couple disclaimers. Um, first of all, this this mod or TC it has a lot of um, drug references, basically, and um, they're not very subtle either. So if you're not into that kind of thing, feel free to click off. This is um, going to have a lot of. I have to say, I think that's strange um, that people get offended by the drug references. Because, you know, back in the day, they used to have all these cartoons where, like, characters would be getting drunk. You know the cartoons where the rescue dogs back in the day would get drunk on their own medicine? They had, like, a whiskey, uh, whiskey container, or a canteen, or a flask. It's in all the old cartoons. Flintstones used to, uh, advertise cigarettes, right? So, it, it, it was surprising to me, given the kind of vulgarity that we've seen in Doom Wads, like Grezzo. I throw in all these drug references for marijuana, and I have had people complain to me they've told me it actually ruins the game, so I never thought that was possible from something so benign, but that's okay. Um, it's funny that he mentions that, though. Like, <laughs> hey, There's other things, too. Uh, green content, basically. I've had to uh, edit some stuff out, unfortunately, to fall in line with uh, YouTube's uh, content policy. I also have to give a epilepsy warning. It's my second one of the channel. Like I said, it's a trippy mod and there are tons of flashing lights and psychedelic colors uh, on display. So anyone who has any kind of epilepsy condition needs to probably not watch this. <laughs> okay, but yeah, let's get on with it. Uh, okay, so before we get into the actual campaign, I think it's a good idea to um, show you a couple of the 
first two maps of uh, Doom 2 Hell on Earth, but um, everything's been replaced with um, yeah, all the monsters, weapons, textures, things from Starha uh, Starhaven, right? So <laughs> here we go. This is Starhaven's version of Entryway. Our chainsaw is... I don't even know what that is. Some kind of homemade star contraption. It looks like it fires um, projectiles, but it's but it is melee. All oh, right, now the combat is a bit off-putting because what looks like um, half the NPCs in the game you can't shoot at them. They're basically just like decorative. So this like dancing <laughs> dancing girl we've got here. Isn't isn't an NPC? Isn't a monster? So that already like sets us off on a bit of a confusion course. Um, but the zombie men have been replaced by uh, the zombie men have been replaced by these weird turnip things. Our pistol is yeah basically one of the light weapons in the game. We'll go in here to show off more of these turnips. <laughs> There we go. That's our first secret. That's uh, that's basically a combat armor, one of these energy orbs. We can take this out as well. This is incredibly disorienting. That's basically an imp. Uh, let's call her a star lady, I suppose. Right. I, I've been, I've played through this like two or three times. And I'm still shooting at these these dancing these dancing chicks, and it should not be. Sorry. It's also very easy to die, um, because you're just not familiar with what with what their attacks are, with the projectiles they fire at you, the way they move. Everything is just so, yeah, so disorienting. I'm gonna actually get the chainsaw for this. There we go. Head out here. I'll show you the shotgun replacement. Never ask why, by the way. Never ask why. I'm not going to question much. It, it is. It is what it is. <laughs> Look at these Christmas decorations. Uh, instead of one of the wall textures, the stone. I think it's one of the rock textures. Look, I like the backdrop, right? I like the mountain backdrop that you've got here. It's very. Really nice art style. I'm, I'm a big fan of that. Now, one texture I'm not a big fan of in terms of YouTube's content <laughs> policy is is this one. I am editing that out, so you won't be seeing it. It is um, it's rather controversial, and uh, if you want to know what that is, you can play it yourself. <laughs> I will be linking the wad in the description. So that's map one. Cool out, cool like uh, intermission screen. Or yeah, or you know, map end screen. Got them playing a light gun game. <coughs> now here's underhauls. This is very hard, by the way. I will be continuousing this. We need our shotgun already, <laughs> right? Here's the shotgun, the uh, sergeant replacement. It's a uh, grounder. Oh, it's either grounder or it's um, rock steady. From um, it's either Grounder from Sonic or Rocksteady from um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Well, I think this. Oh, that's um. Mm. I'm sorry. I actually have to do a music credits list. I haven't done it yet. But uh, that track is called. Let me see here. It's in. It's all. I tried to use mostly royalty-free music. Uh, let's see. Main projects folder. I collected royalty-free music specifically so I could try to uh, share my videos on platforms without running into copyright. But it's funny because I downloaded a whole lot of free music, and then like a few years later they started copywriting it, which I, I don't care uh, if I got copyright strikes just as long as my stuff is visible. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just want my artwork and my uh, content to be viewable. I don't care if they put copyright strikes on it and I can't uh, monetize it. I, I don't care about that. I never really did. Yeah, I went over that. I, I think YouTube 
you know, if they're going to make money from ads, they should for themselves to keep their stuff supported. Because if people like what you do, they'll support you through Patreon or other sites like that. Okay, what is this track called? I'll remember it when I see it. <laughs> it's royalty free. Where are you? These are my favorite tracks I found. They're actually good. You know, you think royalty free music, you think free music. Oh, here it is. Pocket full of posy. I don't know who made this, but... Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, that's the track that I used. Let me go back here for just a second. <laughs> really nice art style. I'm, I'm a big fan of that. Now, one texture I'm not a big fan of in terms of YouTube's content policy is is this one. I am editing that. So this texture, let's just go ahead and load it right now and just see what he's talking about because maybe that's why they shadow ban my channel on too much of a loose cannon. I'll never I'll never give up the fight. YouTube knows that, so they're maybe just tolerating me. I don't know. They tolerate me and they shadow ban my channel because I'll never uh, adhere to these kind of guidelines. They're so absurd. This is so absurd. YouTube, you really can't show this? What's so controversial about this? Uh, let's see here. I'm just going to no clip over to that door. Yeah, just for the sake of this. There it is. Okay. It's just a dude with a bomb. See what the issue is. Um, I have to say though, I don't even remember where I found that picture. I just saved a whole bunch of pictures on my computer hard drive here. Let me see. <clears throat> pictures, weed. I have a folder for weed. Where is it? Here it is. Weed and psychedelic stuff. It's all weed pictures I saved over the years on the internet. Just. I mean, they're not all... Is there weed in here? Are these just people walking? They look like hippies, I guess, but these are celebrities. Is that Owen Wilson? I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, they're just weed pictures I saved, so I don't know where these are from. These are just pictures that I downloaded over the years, and I'm not really sure why they're all in here. <laughs> but uh, I'm not very organized with this sort of thing, so... Actually, I am, but... Oh, I made this one. This was cool. There's good memories. Yeah. Chewbacca found the bong. Look, you can see the Ewoks with joints. <laughs> cool. Alright. Check out this lighter. I actually got this lighter from my grandmother. Isn't that amazing? Look at that. Sick. That's really... <laughs> that is really cool. Yeah. She, she passed away and left that... That's pretty amazing, yeah. I'm proud of that. I got that from my grandmother. Alright, let's see. I'm just going to reverse search this image then. and Because I'm, I'm concerned now. If he says it's controversial, I am concerned. I hope it's not some like racist figure or something. There he is. Let's see who this is. Yeah, I just saved this from Google. But let's, let's find out what this is uh, since he has to cover it with He-Man. That's he, man. All right, let's do www.google.com, google.com/images, and then we reverse search. Um, I found this. I forget when I found this, but I, I just re I just searched in Google because I figured there must be a way to do it. Oh look, there's me. See, there's me smoking. See, I ain't no racist, no way, never. I hate those kind of people. I don't hate them, but I hate the sin, not the sinner. But that's a low, low way to exist. Um, let's see here. Here it is. Okay, let's reverse search this, can we? Search. Find out who this is. I think it's just stock. Yeah, it's from WordPress. This is just stock footage or stock imagery. They. This was for an article, I think, right about cannabis. See WordPress.com state of our profession I don't know what yeah here we go 
I think it's just a stock photo. I don't think this is anybody that anybody... Nobody knows this person's name, right? I don't think so. This is just a person for a photograph for a magazine or whatever. Yeah, so it's not that controversial. Look, there's Winnie the Pooh. He's got honey. So, you know, in, another, in, in the fucking Twilight Zone, this image right here has to be censored of Winnie the Pooh eating honey. No, this is the most harmless thing ever. Look at that. That is the most harmless thing ever. In the whole entire multiverse. And YouTube says you can't show it. That's very odd. Hmm. Alright, well, I just wanted to make sure this was. There, I don't see any association with this being controversial other than he's smoking cannabis from a glass bong, which is a very healthy and spiritual healing thing to do if you do it in the right context, but that's alright. Oh, so you won't be seeing it. It is, um, it's rather controversial, and uh, if you want to know what that is, you can play it yourself. <laughs> I will be linking the wad in the description. So that's map one. Cool out, cool like uh, intermission screen. Or, yeah, or, you know, map end screen, got them playing a light gun game. Now here's Underhaul's leader shotgun already. It's really interesting, he says this is hard. Um... I guess it's technically disorienting, right? Because of the, the colors and everything, but um, I'm kind of glad to hear him say that because I've played a lot of recent Doom Wads people make. If you go to the Doom World forums here, and once again, it's it's odd. I'm, I don't have any responses or replies. What is this? Next topic, huh? Yeah. Not one person replied to it or reacted. How strange. Oh, well, um, yeah, I don't know why that is exactly. It's a mystery to me. How do we go back to where we were? Okay. Yeah, if you go to this, you go to this website, there's tons and tons and tons of projects here. And since everyone's been playing this game for decades, I mean, if you, if you play any of these maps that come out, they do all kinds of very intricate, complex, intellectually advanced uh, things with their design, you know, and I'm not quite there. Like, I do a lot of visual stuff, but I wouldn't say I'm on that level of, you know, not to brag or boast, but honestly. Ooh, what's Warzone? Warzone. Sorry, I just caught that eye. I'm getting distracted now. I haven't been to this this place in a while. Um, oh. You're in the wrong thread, buddy. <laughs> I didn't see what I just saw. That's for the moderators to take care of. Um, what was I saying about it? Oh yeah, just that people are really advanced. They have high difficulty levels. Like, if you play the big map sets that everybody talks about, that everyone raves about, they, are, they get really ridiculously... They can be very difficult. And I've been concerned that my mods are, like, too easy. So, when I play Star Haven... It's a very relaxing experience. It's not very challenging. Um, there are some things about it that actually do do make it easier. It's not really intentional, but like for example, this weapon right here, the the Thunder Pine. Um, I think there's a double. Let me let me check in Star Haven. I think there's a there's accidentally a double. Let me close this slade. Ah, uh, it doesn't. It's okay. It, it crashed. Slade crashes all the time. Where am I? Doom, Doom folder, current test. That's where I was at. The most recent. I made the most recent modifications. I'll have. To, I'm gonna release another um, update to this this thing. Oh. Okay. I put a desktop for Slate on my short on my on my. Uh, bleh. I put a shortcut for Slade on my desktop. This is indica. That's why that happens. That slurs your speech. I should be smoking sativa. Look. Here's sativa. That's what we gotta smoke now. Here's your drug reference for YouTube, so you gotta keep shadow banning me? Do you really? Look, I'm promoting a legal product. <laughs> here we go. Let's get some sativa up in here. I've been smoking indica. Let's get some sativa up in here. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll come back to this. I was going to make edits to it, but let's keep watching. Sorry, let's keep watching. Right. 
Here's the shotgun, uh, sergeant replacement. It's a uh, grounder. Oh, it's either grounder or it's um, rocksteady from. Um, it's either grounder from Sonic or rocksteady from um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Well, I think this is all right. The um, you know the basically the plant and grass textures. Uh, I think that's all right, according to my the research I've done. Hope it is. And there's the super shotgun. It's a sun weapon. <laughs> what is the? These noises are still throwing me off. Uh, grounder. Oh, it's either grounder or it's um, rocksteady from. Um, it's either grounder from Sonic or rocksteady from um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Well, I think this is all right. The um, you know the basically the plant and grass textures. Uh, I think that's all right, according to my the research I've done. Hope it is. And there's the super <laughs> shotgun. It's a sun weapon. <laughs> what is the, these noises are still throwing me off. Done. Hope it is. <laughs> and there's the super shotgun. It's a sun weapon. <laughs> what is the, these noises are still throwing me off. Oh. <laughs> it does feel very cool to fire this. Not very efficient, but... Still really cool. Ah, oh, the the noises. Some of these are just like random snippets of high chatter from from party goers and stuff like that. It is it, again. It is very <laughs> disorienting. Is our key word in this video so far, but it is okay. Take grounder out. My high is at 77%. That is the health, by the way. I should... I haven't even got into the, the HUD. Um, so the stars are our ammo. The high is our health, of course. Uh, magic would be our weapons, our light weapons. Thank you. Our... The, a planet is our... Is what Doomguy used to be. <laughs> Orgon is our armor. I don't know why, but that's it. And yeah. You know what Orgon is? Here's another reason they're shadow banning me, because I'm talking about Orgone. What is Orgone? Now, if you search Orgone, you'll get this kind of stuff. Oh, look, it's just a... Uh, it's a kind of decoration for rich hippies. Pyramids with designs in them. If you put it on your porch, it banishes demons and chemtrails, they say. Right? I mean, maybe that's true. Maybe it's so silly that you wouldn't think to try it, and it actually does work. Uh, I think there's a guy named uh, Ken Rolla who was selling these. Dane Wigington actually barred him from um, entrance to one of his geoengineering conferences. I think it's because he was afraid it would hurt the cause. But we don't know. What is Orgon Energy? What is Orgon? There's a Wikipedia article. Here's an Orgon emulator. Accumulator, excuse me, not that. Not an emulator, an accumulator. <coughs> Orgon, a concept variously described as an esoteric energy or hypothetical universal life force. Originally proposed in the 1930s by Wilhelm Reich. Dr. Wilhelm Reich, anyone know who that is? I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right. I've heard it a million different ways. Reich. 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 Austrian doctor of medicine, psychoanalyst, member of the second generation of analysts after Sigmund Freud, whom everybody knows in American high schools, but nobody knows about Dr. Wilhelm Reich, the author, the author excuse me, of several influential books, The Impulsive Character, The Function of the Orgasm, 1927, Wow, what's that? That sounds controversial, but it's not. It's real science, it's health, and we should all be educated on it. But for some strange reason, um, 
This man died in prison despite having committed no violent crimes and they incinerated his research. They literally burned his pamphlets and his papers here in the United States in uh, the 1960s. So, why did they do that? <coughs> Dane Wigington of GeoengineeringWatch.org says we live in an insane asylum. Maybe that's the answer. I would hope to think not, but... Uh, so, orgone was seen as a massless, omnipresent substance similar to luminiferous ether, but more closely associated with living energy than with inert matter. It could allegedly coalesce to create organization on all scales, from the smallest microscopic units called bions in orgone theory to macroscopic structures like organisms, clouds, or even galaxies. And these bions were actually what are responsible for making the sky blue, according to his research. <coughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying we know for sure if anything is real or not, but um, there are some holes in mainstream science, and we've all become aware of that. And, you know, the more you look into things and research, sometimes you find more holes in mainstream science. It does happen. There's a lot of government funding and... You know, people want things to be a certain way, so they fund it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sometimes there's some of that going on. Science has become the new religion. Take a look around. I would like to see revival of whatever this is. Can we study this again? How come we didn't learn about this in high school? What's this device here? Supposedly it prevents cancer. So, I don't know if it's appropriate or not in a video game. Orgon is your armor because it gives your it gives your essence a metaphysical strength, stamina, physical, spiritual, mental, emotional, other realms that you don't even know about. So, sorry. You can you can make heads or tails of what the the different ammo is supposed to be. Okay, I might die here, as I have before. Now, <laughs> that is the demon, the pinky replacement. A uh, horrifying mutated set of legs. Alright. I'm basically gonna play until I die. Okay, our secret, of course. I don't know what the mega armor was, I don't know if it was some. If it was some grass or something. Okay. Uh, but but there you go. Um, I'm, I'm probably not even going to finish map two. But this just kind of gets you introduced to uh, what replaces the early game monsters and the kind of the early game weapons up until the SSG. All right. So over to the main campaign. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh god, let's get out of here. Okay, so now I've loaded up the WOD with the okay, Freedom good. Phase really 2. Those weren't working. Because um, I tested this a bunch of times, and these high resolution... What are those things called? PNGs, or, or they're called lumps, but they're PNGs. Yeah, I was afraid they weren't going to go in, so... This is good to see someone tested this. That is excellent. Thank you. Because I was really worried that's important, those different uh, titles there. I would. And that is necessary to um, basically play um, Getting High in the Afterlife, the new story episode. Uh, but that's not all. If we go into new games, um, there's a lot of content here. You also get a 32 map megawad replacement for Doom 2. Um, there's Afterlife, which we mentioned, and then there's a bunch of like cool standalone. Oh, I guess there there technically are. Th there might. I don't know how many maps there are. There are. I don't think there's 32. I didn't make that many. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to get any trouble here. We're not doing any false advertising. Um, how many maps are in this? Let me just check really quick. We'll just go ahead and load this. <clears throat> Alright, here's Slade, and then here's Starhaven. We'll just go ahead and load that up right now. Okay, 
You have to form a green energy ball in your hands. Okay, so, um... First of all, yeah, this is a little bit of a mess. I didn't mean... I, I tried to be organized. This is the most organized way that I was able to do it. Just have all the decorates out here. I don't like having a directory for actors. I just put all the decorate files out in the big open area. But how many maps are there? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just started in the triple digits randomly, but let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Oh, I guess, <laughs> I guess technically there are. I didn't even realize that. I thought there were like 15 or something. But, but, but half of these down here, all these down here are like half complete. So... You're free to roam around and enjoy the scenery, but they may not, you know. Um, and th I left these here because, say, for example, if a meteor falls into a house where a computer is that, that I keep all my stuff on, it's good to have a backup. You know, maybe it would be saved on mod database. I could re-download it and continue these maps. So it makes sense. They're so small. It's okay to include them in here. But they're not really in the main campaign, if I remember at all. Yeah, and actually a lot of these maps came from uh, my late deceased friend. I've got a few of those. I've got a few friends, acquaintances, people I've known who are no longer here. Uh, thanks to substances. So, this particular individual, his name is Corey Romer. He said, people said we sounded similar. <laughs> it's funny because we, we said people said we sounded similar. Not related at all. But this person said, uh, this guy said to me, because we, we used to share Doom Wads and stuff, and he said, if anything ever happens to me, make sure you take these Doom Wads and do all kinds of crazy stuff with them. I don't care what you do. Put them in the stupidest Tim and Eric Grezzo Wad ever. I don't care. Just fucking spread them around. And let people do whatever they want. Yeah, we both kind of had this policy. When it comes to... We have this policy when it comes to uh, Doom maps. Anything that we make, anything I make, the people that I've worked with, um, a lot of us, we make it all as open source as possible. So any of these maps here, if anybody wants to, you're free to take any of these maps, open them up in Doom Builder, and rearrange things and do whatever you want and add to it, and put it in your own maps and play it in Brutal Doom if you want to. Because this is a this is a magic Doom wad here. This Doom PK3 is a magic PK3. It exists outside of time and space. It's actually supposed to to uh, help heal up some of the other realms. So you think you're playing one of these maps in the future? After I've already played it in Starhaven, you might be playing it in the past, and this might be a time traveling magic PK3, and it might be actually coming back to heal that area. You know, you gotta do what you gotta do. There's a bunch of demons in those hallways. You gotta go brutal doom. You gotta go brutal doom on them. I've said this, um, I personally don't play brutal doom. I've played it a tiny bit just to see what it's about. I think it's really good. I think it's extremely impressive. You know, um, it's, it's really, it's technical mastery, I think. The way they designed it, the code and everything, but there is a, a real symphony, there's a melody to Brutal Doom when you play it, and you really get into it, especially that SMG. Um, at first I, I looked at the SMG and I was like, what is this? And then I realized it looked like the weapon that you see in the original um, promotional artwork for Doom, with the Marine where he's running, you know where he's running and he's got the gun down, and the one imp is trying to grab his arm and the other Marine's running behind him, that one. I realized the SMG in Brutal Doom looks just like that, and then I was like, I'm in love with this now. It works extremely well. The reloading works extremely well. So I love everything about Brutal Doom. Uh, except it's it's just for me personally, honestly, if I can choose, I like to play a video game that feels more... If I'm playing a shooting game, I don't want to get up close and personal. I just don't. I don't like getting up close and personal and... and 
reaching out and feeling the skull crush in my hands. I'm not really about that, you know. If I have to, if I have to murder a monster that's killing all humans in self-defense, I don't want. I want it to be as impersonal as possible. It's just a, just, just a um, personal preference for me. You know, I played through Doom. I played Doom 2016, and I played Doom Eternal. And if I remember, I did beat Doom Eternal on the Ultra Violence difficulty, and that was that I couldn't get past that one. So, of course, I played the hell out of Doom Eternal. And um, they, they really forced you to go use those brutalities, those close-up melees, and they are extremely well done. So I appreciated it. And honestly, if I was 12 or 14, I probably would have appreciated it a lot more. But, like, that phase is phasing out of my life, so, uh... I like the impersonal, just the classic Doom feels very tame, it feels very formal, you know what I mean? To just put a monster down from a distance, it goes down, it's dead, fast as possible. I don't want to see its body flopping around, all the screaming and everything. Like, that, that happens in reality. You know, that happens in reality. And... <clears throat> If you're ever in a real war situation, in physical Earth reality, you know, like, I watch these police videos, you watch police body cam videos and see what it's really like when people get shot and stuff. Yeah, it's not, um, something to avoid. It's, it, I mean, it is something to avoid. It's not something that you want to even entertain. Eh, there's crazy people out there, obviously. <laughs> stay as far the hell away from that stuff but uh, if it happens you know if you were ever if I was in a situation honestly and I it was self defense and I saw somebody and they were suffering I would I would do a mercy killing as fast as possible I'd just put a bullet in their head just saying if, if it ever came to that you know what I mean no matter who they were I don't yeah when you're like 11 years old sometimes and you're really immature, you know, when I was like 12 years old, I liked to play Apocalypse. Oh, that's why I started this video. I haven't been able to connect for a long, 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 long time, but I got a message here I'm supposed to actually take care of, and then we're going to finish watching this. We're halfway through it. Um, let's see here. Messages... Uh, okay, I gotta get this file to this person. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's see here. This is a priority, because this guy was trying to get this stuff. Doomocalypse. I believe I have it over here. Based on the PlayStation Doom game, or uh, PlayStation Bruce Willis shooter. Rated T for Teen. And surprise! I feel like if it had come out years later, it would have been rated M. Had red blood flying all over the place, limbs flying all over the place. It was beautiful. That was a it's classic. It's a classic. Apocalypse with Bruce Willis. Absolute classic. One of the best action games ever, in my humble opinion. Let's see. Find the Doom folder. Brian, focus. Focus. All right. Brian Leo Star Doom Wads, where are you? Uh, Doom Apocalypse. If it ain't here, it's in a folder all its own. Um, there it is. All right, so we gotta find the most recent file. See, when I played this and I was younger, I, I used to really enjoy using the flamethrower. When I was like 12 years old, when I played this game on the PlayStation, I used to really enjoy using the fucking flamethrower and hearing the people scream. And now I'm like, why did I think that? That's not cool. Now I'm, I'm 34 years old and I do not like that. I, I, I have no interest in playing this game now. It's very good, but I especially have no interest. I don't like... Um, I'm just not into it. The screaming. <laughs> not into it. I was just playing Brutal Doom and I replaced the damned actors. They have these like chained humans and I was like, I just don't want to see it. I replaced it with like a flower or something. I'll show you what I replaced it with. It wasn't a fucking flower. It was something else. <laughs> we'll see you in a minute. Alright, let me just double check and make sure this is the right one.
<laughs> Here we go, Chief. Okay, so um, let me just upload that really quick here. We'll go to like Media Fire or something. Media Fire, can you hold that Media Fire? You think Media Fire can hold this? Bicycles, verified. What is this? Upload file, thank you. Doomocalypse. All right, let's keep watching this because I'm. I need to see what he says before we run out of time. Own maps, which I've had a wee look at as well, which are a bit more experimental. Like this one's called Test Map, for example. So it's kind of some cut extra bonus content there. So you get a lot of content uh, from this one. Um, so we're going to play Afterlife now. Um, here are the difficulties. You've got Starlight Baby replacing I'm Too Young to Die. Instead of hurt, uh, instead of hey not too rough. There's feeling silly. Um, energy masters hurt me plenty. Well, drug trips UV. Uh, nightmare is wouldn't recommend it. I actually wouldn't recommend playing even on wild drug trip. I'm actually gonna um, play this on energy master. All right, so let's go. This is the intro sequence. Here we are in Starhaven. And it, yeah, it's a bit dystopic, isn't it? Just a little bit bleak. And it's about to get uh, a lot worse as well. This is what I first saw when I first learned about the WOD on um, Doom Wads. Again, what a great channel, I mention it a lot. Only one thing to do now ingest some of that weird bottle mist, I don't know, some kind of drug. And it's put him to sleep. And there's the nuke. Alright. Oh dear. Hey, fuck you, man. What are you doing? This is Traviel Pine Dancer. That's the name of our main protagonist. The physical part of the real reality's done. I didn't feel my body vaporize. I drew a door in the attic, but I need one portal star. So that's the thing we need to get in this map. It's called Purgatory Party Entrance. Uh, before we get going, I need to also mention. Uh, Space Line 88, um, the author of this this wad, has wanted to draw attention to the fact that um, their main focus is on storytelling, uh, character design, and setting, uh, rather than combat and um, like level design. So, imagine not to expect any mind-blowingly like intricate maps or really challenging skill saw-esque fights, but. To be honest, I do find the fights very challenging, just for the fact that I don't know what the hell is going on. But we do know that that is a Star Lady, the replacement for an Imp. We are armed with our our blaster, our, our number two. Wow. 
and <laughs> come on, yeah, let's open that door. There's the turnips again, or, or <laughs> sorry, that's good to hear because I was afraid it was too easy. It, it it might be too easy for most Doom people, most of the people that play these games. I was concerned. I tested it a lot of time, many many times, and I figured it's better for it to be too easy than too hard, especially since um, this is probably not subject matter that the Doom community would usually be too crazy about, obviously. Like they're, like I said, they're into horror stuff and action and, you know, hang on a second here. Zombie man replacements, this, again, this is the imp replacements, and I've just been shot. Now, we may as well go through here now, we get another cutscene. This event has been manifested by the, oh dear, Strammons, <laughs> born out of their tribe. As soon as the, nu the nukes hit, a holographic screenshot is taken of this fiery limbo. This is our god, Space Lion. When you, it's interesting when you nuke a city, I think that read. I, I don't disagree. <laughs> Now another one of the disorienting things is that half the power-ups are basically wheat and that makes it hard to know what we've picked up. This is a new monster though. Um, it's a replacement for the either the pinky or the spectre. It's hard to tell because obviously both of them are visible, like the other one was that four-legged monstrosity thing. We're familiar now with Rocksteady and Grounder, the shotgunner replacements. I need to pick up. Yeah, I just don't know what the ammo is. We've got these little smoking gnomes, they're kind of cute. So yeah, this is on um, uh, Energy Master. It is very hard on UV or Well Drug Trip. Oh, there's another thing to show you as well. But wait a minute, let me just make sure all the, 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 the tormented souls are all dead. Oh, I killed her, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, that's our Orgon, that's an armor bonus, it's some kind of energy orb. Now, if you see this little critter running about here, why is it all shaded in black? Well, I actually did that. I've had to edit this as well. These are the pirate succubuses, and I had to edit them because if I didn't, they'd be nude, and that's not something that YouTube is cool with. <laughs> So I had to censor one of the monsters. Oh, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, here we have the kind of, I don't know, the, the spade holder, the weird gatekeeper -y like person, and his, maybe, his partner, I guess. Yeah, here's our SSG again. We saw that on the, uh, the demo maps I showed you, the kind of the Doom 2 sprite replacement ones that I showed you at the beginning. More health. I guess that's the med kit. Some cool planetary textures everywhere. Of course, because when you're playing this one, you feel like you're up in space. Very psychedelic sofa. And a giant bed with more grass on the pillow. And this is our next cutscene. We can get inside the drawer. Here we go. <laughs> There's also some scales she's holding. Crappy. You cannot leave the earth. Dude. So, <laughs> <laughs> Some text to speech. There it went wrong. Um, okay, yeah. And now we have a couple dozen more dancers. And a couple more dozen identical sound files to boot. I'll get out of there. Oh dear, and now they just inundated this room and there's some... Shit. We've got some... These are the Lost Soul replacements. I don't think we've so, seen them yet. Of this character, you know, um... The, this... I, I basically just created the Doom Lot I wanted to play. I just created something I wanted to play. This to me is extremely relaxing. Um, you, you don't have to worry about shooting at her because these are energy weapons. This is basically you're just making everybody get high. 
So all these characters that here, are these this this um, icy elemental or whatever this thing is, I think is an icy elemental. It's a cold energy, very cold. That over there is a tiki girl. She's a workaholic. She doesn't know how to stop. Secretary lost the ability to speak. All she knows how to do is grunt. And she has many eyes for watching and doing multiple things. But she's irritated, and it doesn't need to be that way. So, these are, <laughs> these are light energy weapons. They basically just relax everybody and make them feel good. So since Flace here, your your friend, your travel agent, your tour guide, see in the in the comic, um, here let me explain this for a second. Uh, in the comic, these two characters. Let me go over to a demonstration. We'll just go to the lunar desert. This is safe. The lunar desert is safe to look at on YouTube. Some of my other videos are not. <laughs> when I show a lot of my artwork. Where are we? Here, hang on, sorry. Just give me a second here. I'm figuring out where this is. Okay, Lunar Desert. This is the most recent comic. You can find it on um, Gumroad. I'll put a link in the description. Uh-oh. Pages. So we have this, we have these characters here. That lighter is very sentimental, by the way. It is. Starhaven Lunar Desert's most recent comic. Okay, so these two characters. This is Traviel Pine Dancer. This is Flace Lovan. Now the interesting thing is Traviel's been out in the wilderness for so long he's he's learned to adapt to it he's learned where things that you can eat are he's learned what to look out for and that's not just in physical earth that's in like metaphysical realms as well he's been in the desert for a long time he was forced into the extreme of just fleeing out into the wilderness Flace here on the other hand um, embraced the inner city she embraced smart cities and they started coming around. So she got really used to learning how to communicate with large groups of people, finesse them, almost like in a political way. In fact, this character here, Flace Lovan, um, she has the unique ability to actually hypnotize people, you know, just like Dracula almost. Well, certain people, you know, just like the Jedi mind trick, just look at them, just make them believe certain things. That's only if she's not attracted to them, though. <laughs> so, <laughs> that makes for an interesting plot point. Um, oops. But anyway, these two characters end up really helping each other out because... Yeah, Cat wants to go in the other room. Because he doesn't know how to navigate the city. This is like in the year 4000 and they have these weird like eight-way intersections that and they have like this weird color-coded panel with like a three blue buttons and six green buttons and they're forming a cross and then there's three yellow buttons down here and there's purple buttons over here and it's like what there's a cross made of circles and they're all different colors and when you cross the street you have to push all these bubbles so everyone in the city who's used to that they just grew up and know how to do it it's like just doing two plus two is four and uh, somebody who's been in the wilderness for a long time and is going to see that and be like, what the fuck is this? I remember 2023, there was one button you pushed on the pole. There was one little button that you pushed on the pole and then you would wait for a thing that allows you to walk and you didn't even have to press it half the time because most of the time you could figure it out. But now what is this? Th there's a cr Okay, there's a cross with three or four circles and they're all different colors and I have to push a certain combination of blue and purple and green and then I can cross this eight-way intersection what the hell I have no clue what the hell to do so I'm gonna do anything I possibly can to stay away from that and go around even if it takes me two hours and it would take me 15 minutes it doesn't matter <laughs> I'm gonna weave my way through the alleys and everything to avoid whatever the fuck that is so that's what he did and she just grew up with it because she had been reincarnated over and over again learning to be an expert in finessing humans is actually really easy to do if you're in this energy form 
so um, so that's important that's why she's a travel guide and here's something I don't understand about um, I don't understand why I'm trying to think how to say this whenever you have a big franchise of any kind or a cartoon or a movie and they turn it into a video game they always try too hard to make it exactly as much as they can like the movie and they shouldn't do that I think they should just take creative freedom and just do whatever they can to make it fit into the context of a game do whatever you want clone characters change the plot change it completely make it totally different tell the developers just throw your hands up and say do whatever the hell you want just have a few guidelines like this is your hero so obviously they save the day at the end please don't turn them into the like a vampire or a zombie or anything like that you know this is your standard formula we have the, her the hero characters this is like a PG level content now so you know please don't do this and that you know but then do whatever you want make it a fun video game and uh, I don't know why like I knew some people that really liked the Lord of the Rings games for example and I can see why you know they're, they're pretty good but it, they looked static to me the ones for the PlayStation 2 there was something about them that was it felt too constricted and too like the creativity was blocked because they were trying too hard to make it it look exactly like Peter Jackson's movie and they should have just been more creative with it and just given it its own art style that fits no they did a really good job with how it looks but it, to me it just looked static it just looked like a downgrade from the movie the cutscenes like why am I looking at this you know make it new different crazy that's why I think uh, Shadows of the Empire is one of the best Star Wars games. It wasn't based on any movie. It was loosely based on the comic, the graphic novel, and the paperback. And they, and they really did their own thing with that. And that's the best Star Wars game ever. I would argue possibly one of the best action games ever. But you might think I'm crazy for that. So anyway, that's why these, these two characters really help each other out. Because they have to navigate through both the wilderness and the city he can't do the city and she can't do the wilderness it's too scary it's too dangerous there's cactuses out there there's poison things you know there's vampire bats there's lizard people all kinds of scary stuff so uh that's that's why she's there in the game for whatever reason when you're in this in-between realm and you eat a whole bunch of mushrooms, you can multiply your photons. It's kind of a hologram, so you're, she's not even really there at all. You don't even know where she is. She could be somewhere else. This is just copies of holograms of her. That's basically what that is. I mean, you could look at it that way if you want to. But I left all of this open for interpretation, so if it makes more sense that it's something else to you, then go ahead and believe that if you want. Are these a bunch of clones? Did these come from, you know, did this come from a seashell on the beach? They say an alternative to cloning, if you don't believe in test tube babies for, you know, maybe you don't want corporate corporations messing with that stuff. You want to you want to mass produce, you want to mass clone somebody, you know. You can go the the super villain Lex Luthor route if you want. I wouldn't recommend it. But they say there are magic, magic uh, seashells, giant magic seashells on the beach. And these are actually portals, if you find them. They're, they're huge. They're like the size of uh, pickup trucks. And if you know how to sing the right tune and meditate, you can actually produce copies of human beings. I've never seen one of these myself. People tell me about them at campfires. But let's finish watching this video, okay? Right now. Okay, yeah, another one left. So these these silly dancers are just going to make the combat even harder. I've got to keep my distance here because I forget which ones are hit scanners, understandably so, and I forget which ones are the projectile enemies. All right, but yeah, I know that these trees are ammo, one, as I can see in the HUD. Okay, I think that's most of them done. We have a few more over here. Why is why is one of the 
why is one of the sound effects of an elephant's... <laughs> don't question anything. That's, that's your first mistake. Don't question anything. <laughs> Alright, there's the inhabitants of Starhaven. Aren't they beautiful? <laughs> I actually do quite like the art style overall. It's very... Kind of reminds me of a weird Adult Swim cartoon, you know, or a, or one of the early late night Nickelodeon affairs. We'll just run through these these rings. This room is totally repopulated again. All right, I think that's all of them down here. And I, I oh shit, we just got blasted up there. Why is Rocksteady an elephant? Okay, we've been through there already. Right. Okay, it's up here, the, the red portal door. Piss off. Now, I wouldn't pay the monster count any mind because it just constantly increases. Absolutely no idea why. So this is the red portal door, and these are these, we saw them in the intro sequence, these really cool, like, um, headphone wearing ghosts. I really like them. Now if you, I don't know, if you can reference the movie that that sample comes from, then you're a better man than me. We got more epilepsy for you. I can't shoot them, what am I doing? We've got a weird footprint thing. Bl flaming meteors. I don't know, Crusher. Our health's doing pretty well this time. Alright, that uh, calls for a save then. I don't do too well at this fight normally down here. I'm just going to blast my Roman candle at everything. I remind you, I have to remind you what this mission is. It's basically to use our light weapons to rid this world of all the tormented souls who, I don't know, worked too hard or had too difficult a life. We're here to, like, set them free. And, of course, to get extremely high. Okay, saving now. This is a, this is a tough area. We've got new monsters here as well. We need to get that Mega Spear right now. That is, uh, yeah, that, um, 420 orb is the Mega Sphere, just believe me. I'm going to switch over to the Sun SSG. There are... where are they? Yeah, this female Chucky doll is the chain gunner replacement. Got some more censored succubuses as well. I never thought I'd have to do that, but I did. That's uh, ingenuity. Gotta know how to make it appropriate for the sensors, I guess. Yeah, it's easy to do. You open up these things and slay like it's right here. Let me see really quick. The decorate. Don't get distracted, Brian. Uh, decorate. Uh, weapon. Where are you at? There it is. Alright, let's see here. So the Power Pine and the Thunder Pine. And the Thunder. The thunder. Control F. It's called Shotgun 1 because I forgot to name it. It just replaces the shotgun. So if you're looking for the shotgun replacement, you hit Control F and just type Shotgun. That's where it would be. Alright. So. Yeah. Um. Fire custom missile pine light. It's not supposed to do any damage, but for some reason it seems to do damage, and I'm not sure why. I don't know where I messed up the code. I'm looking at it, and I don't see where. It only uses one shotgun shell, which it is supposed to. But see, there's a um, there's the see. Look at this fire shotgun. That right there is the hit scan. That's the regular hit scan. And then this is the effect. It shoots out this cool green glowing effect. It's just a, it's a model I think because it's a 3D model. But let's see. Okay. All these zeros here should mean it doesn't use any ammo and it does not do any damage. Fire 
shotgun. So, so I don't know. know. Hmm. Because when, when I play, play it, I can hear it doing a double impact. impact. I can hear the monsters getting hit twice in like a split second. For, I don't know why it's, it's really weird. I can't see why. I have no idea. Does anyone see it? Look, th this right here should not... Okay, look. Maybe that's it. The pine light? Let me see. I bet that's it. Pine light. That must be it. Let me see. Actor pine light here. No! See? Damage zero. Yeah. I don't know. Damage zero. Try the green thunderbolt. I know it's not that one. It can't be. Oh! Oops! I don't know how I forgot that, but... Oh, no, no, no! It's right there! I didn't forget it. Nope, it's right there. See? I don't know why it's doing that. It's weird. Alright, let's get back to the... I don't know why. Weird. Oh! Okay, yeah. They're not all done yet. The sensory overload on this difficulty setting isn't quite as bad as on the higher ones. Still pretty bad though. Got three of these airplanes. <laughs> yep. They're all here. Um, these airplanes replace the... Um, oh, that's a rocket launcher by the way. May as well get that fired. They replace the cackles, I think. Oh. Just taking it all in. I know all these all these monsters are letting off star trails as well. Even trippier than usual. I think that's them all done. That <laughs> that is the Mancubus replacement, I think. Don't quote me on that, I could be wrong though. Do you hear that? The rocket launcher. Oh, I hope I can find more... Ow! The rocket launcher makes some Scatman John <laughs> sounds as well. And here's some bad news, we're completely out of ammo. That's not nice. Now we've got one rocket. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, we've got yeah, no ammo left. BFG up there, you're supposed to run under that crusher thing. That. You're supposed to pick that up. I'm gonna save off and... Yeah, you were supposed to pick this up, uh, that meteor there. Oops, sorry. <clears throat> Watch. <sighs> Got it.
Okay. I'm, I have to stop here. It won't kill you. There's a crusher back here. You didn't get the BFG replacement. They... <coughs> excuse me. There's a BFG that you get. It's um, a meteor when you pick it up. It becomes a green glowing energy. Uh, he, he didn't get it. That's okay. I may not have either. It shouldn't happen, but it did. Uh, now we've got and I got wrecked. <laughs> those are the, uh, I think, those women in straight jackets are like the Hell Knight replacements or something. Oh, those are Alright, I. Those are crazy delusional uh, porn stars. They've spent too much time indoors in gated communities and they have no idea what the outside world is like in places like you know Kensington and third world countries <laughs> and they're living in a bubble and they never had to leave <laughs> and they got in the habit of selling pictures of themselves and they um, ended up in a world where they believe that 60% of, of um, people of a certain gender will be excited if you just run up to them and do certain things. So, I don't know if that really happens anywhere in the world for real very much anymore, but it may have happened a little bit for a short time. Uh, but people caught on to it. <laughs> but it certainly created a very interesting thought form. Anyway, that replaces the Revenant. I've had enough. Um, that is enough for my senses for one day. I am okay, completely so zoned out now. Which there's a BFG 9000 and a plasma rifle. I know I, I, if I remember there's somewhere lingering around. So I'll replay this here in a minute and we'll see. Which was probably the intent of um, of this ward. So there you go, that's Starhaven getting high. To be honest with you, um, I don't find this disorienting at all. I do find it extremely relaxing. And I say that with all humility. <laughs> It is supposed to be colorful, but see, I was afraid it would be boring. So to hear that it's overstimulating is certainly a compliment. I do appreciate it. In the afterlife, everyone. Um, yeah, it's, let's be honest, it's not something that I'm probably <laughs> going to revisit, but it is just something really cool, really like left field. I something going to say, hopefully, inspirational. Because if I can do this... Imagine what all those other people all over DeviantArt and all those other places can do with this. Imagine. No, imagine the possibilities. And this is all free. This is this can be free. I mean, I highly recommend you do go to Steam and legally buy Doom. I did. I legally own Doom. I legally own Doom still on an actual on an actual CD, DVD ROM. I have all the original Doom wads on an actual physical CD-ROM, so I bought it at Walmart of all places. God bless Walmart. <laughs> it's it's done a lot of good. I mean, you know, it's done harm, but it also has done good. It's better than McDonald's. But everyone's corrupt these days. Don't don't point fingers. I believe there's good intention behind that. Uh, owners of Walmart. Anyway. Uh, what was I going to say about this? Well, thank you for the coverage. I very much appreciate it. We're going to subscribe here. Roast Doom. Yeah, people can say anything they want about it. If you think it's silly and stupid and childish and, and um, you know, you might think it's in some ways too pornographic, some people might. That's all right. Say what you want about it. Um, I just honestly created something that I love to play. This is just like a dream world, dream come true. I'm just like, I'm going to enjoy myself, right? Might as well. Even if nobody responds in the Doom World forums, because either I'm being shadow banned or people that play Doom just aren't into this kind of thing. Anyway, here's Doom Apocalypse. So let me go ahead and uh, share this link copy share link okay let me go back to doom world sorry it took me so long con 3 very sorry sir 
Yeah, this was literally like, I've got flash drives all over the place. I've got them stored in this place and that place. They're in boxes over here and on one side of this joint and the other. Alright. Phew. Sorry, it took so long. Why is that blue too? Excuse me. Submit reply. Hope I did that right. I don't know why that second sentence is still blue like a link. But sorry it took a while. <coughs> yeah, there's assets reused. This is like a just for fun project. This Doomocalypse thing I was working on was purely just for fun. And honestly, I did start making it at a time when I was feeling a lot of aggressive energy. I was really angry, and I wanted to play Apocalypse again. But I'll be honest with you, this is where I'm weird. People are going to think I'm weird. I cannot, I cannot play any game, any third-person video game. I can't. If, this, if the character you're playing as is wearing closed-toed footwear. It doesn't matter if they're male or female. It, it literally, like, there's this... I mean, I already have a weird, it's, uh, what is it called? Tactile sensitivity. I can't wear closed-toed footwear. It causes serious panic attacks, like severe, for more than, like, a few. Now, in the middle of the, in the middle of the winter, when it's below freezing, and it's actually, like, gonna burn my skin, then I'm able to do it for, like, a half to, and it's not really nice, but, like, I'm able to do it because the cold is so fucking fierce. Uh, when it's, you know, the wind... Being on a bicycle in the in this northern part of the United States, northeast northeast, down like the East Coast area, it gets really freezing in the winter. So on a bicycle, yeah, I have a pair of Vans. They're like size 14 because if they're huge, I can I can wear them for a short time. But that's the honest to God truth. That's the honest to God truth. I um so if I'm looking at a third person video game, if I can hear the footsteps and it sounds synthetic and not organic. Like it sounds like synthetic material, like rubber hitting instead of a human foot. That is, uh, I can't, I can't deal with it. So I used to be able to, it's around the age of 23, it just started like OCD. It just began around that time. So that's okay. Cause I don't need to, I don't need to waste time playing those games ever again. Anyway, they were very, they're very good, but I was in the mood to get that same feeling. I wanted to get the same feeling, that rush, playing through Apocalypse. Um, but but seeing seeing the the boots, the combat boots, is just oh, it's the worst thing. I can look at anything in the universe. I'm an artist. I'm an animator. I'm a cartoonist. Seriously, I can look at. I can stare at. I can draw anything in the whole world. The grossest stuff, I, 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 I'm fascinated by everything in the, on the earth. I will look at it, you know? I'll explore it. I'll look at it. Whatever it is, I can draw. You have to be as an artist. You have to be interested in everything. That's how to be successful, I think, and to be able to open to it. Uh, but for some reason, around the age of 23, I just got this, like... You know, it's like a crucifix to a vampire. <laughs> So that's why I can't play Apocalypse anymore. Isn't that weird? I think I got MK Ultra. I did have some missing time. I did have some missing time. What was it? 2017? I think it was 2017. I took a nap outside. I was sleeping outside at night. Shouldn't have done that. Yeah, that was weird. Nah, that's just a joke. Entertainment purposes only. I'm just kidding. Who knows? We all got MK Ultra. Um, but yeah, I wanted to play Apocalypse like I just showed you. It was fun with all the same sound effects. Such a unique combination of sound effects and music. But something's changed for sure in the, in the world. We're hearing about timeline jumps. Honestly, honest. In all humility, like if there's any potential that we could actually do timeline jumps. I don't want to go towards dystopian stuff like that. I don't. It's pretty impressive as a fiction, fictional art form. Maybe a warning of the future, but I'm moving away from that as much as I can. I don't like that stuff. 
Staying away from that. Uh, if you have any questions, hopefully this winter I'll be able to log into these sites much more consistently. That's true. In the summertime, I'm outside all. I'm all over the place. I'm on the go for days and days and days. I'll be gone like a wild cat. Severe claustrophobia. Yeah, I have severe claustrophobia. <laughs> I was talking to this guy at 3 a.m. outside of a parking garage the other night. Or maybe it was midnight. Yeah, it was like around 11 p.m. or so. Yeah, it was like 11, I think. 11-ish. Just this random person I was talking to, he said to me, one of the things that he said during conversation, he goes, These people are going out to live in the woods now. And I was like, well, yeah, of course they are. <laughs> because that's where it feels comfortable, where we're mammals. You want to be grounded, you want to be outside, you want to hear the birds. Well, duh. This is traumatic, living indoors. I mean, you get privacy, that's nice, that's good, if you have it. That's the purpose of it. Um, but, oh, believe me, I've watched, I've been watching YouTube, I've been watching as much as I can possibly see. You know what? I see a lot of things that I believe are shadow banned. Anyone know who the shift is? That's Brittany Simon Stalker. You will not find the shift if you search the shift. I've searched the shift. Her name used to, or hit their name, I don't know if it's a he or she or they, I'm going to say they slash them. I want to be respectful and respect uh, whoever gender pronouns they are. Just of my own free will, I choose to try to be respectful as much as possible. Um, I don't care if it's a law or not. So it's a they slash them. This person was Brittany Simon Stalker. They used to call themselves uh, Muse Talks. Was it doll? No, not doll. It's been it a was. Long time. It was Muse Talks. I remembered it now. Ah, I don't remember. I put this. I threw I have this it somewhere. I have yeah. Old, old videos left over. Muse Talks. Anybody remember Muse Talks? They changed their name a bunch of times though. Right yeah, now, they changed it to something else Russia. before that. And then it was anyway, the shift. Anyway, shadow band to hell. Anyway, that's what it was. Like Muse Muse Talks, channel, Muse Talks. And I still yeah. see it. I CIA still get remembers. For, for Bank of America reason. remembers. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Whatever. It makes no sense. Why me? Me? What, do, what does this do? What is this? I don't understand. Uh, it's weird. I don't know. Why am I... Because I know about shadow banding, but what am I going to do with this information? I nothing. It, honestly, I'm not that interested. It's okay. This person's going off on... Maybe I'm supposed to pay attention because they're planning something. I mean, I don't think so. They don't seem like it. Yeah, she was pretty shaken up, though. Brittany Simon was pretty shaken up. I don't know. I wasn't there. I only heard about it. I only heard about it from videos that are now long, long deleted, and I don't have them because, actually, I had tons and tons and tons of, of Brittany Simon videos where she was talking live streams from years ago. 2011, 2009, 2000, even, well, I don't know if she was on back then, but like the earliest videos, they were all on a three terabyte hard drive that stopped functioning one day, and I tried to get it fixed, and they couldn't fix it for whatever reason. I had tons of amazing videos, three terabytes, and it was almost all filled up, too. Yeah, it was like 80% full. It was like in the red, when the little bar goes across. Yeah, three terabytes. So I had tons of Brittany Simon videos on there. One day it just stopped working. No idea why. That's the only time that ever happened, actually. All my other hard drives are still working. Balloon statement. Still functioning. That's very good. It's very important. So in the wintertime, I imagine I'll be logging in more consistently. We'll have more of a social media presence. Yeah, Alright, let's see here. If you have any questions, let me know. Let me know. Not know though. I'm, I don't know how to type. I mixed sativa with indica. Legal. This is legal stuff right here. This is really good. I highly recommend it. Somebody was telling me about some new. There's a new cartridge. It's more expensive. I think it was like $33. This is about 24 And this can last me a month. 
Sometimes I use two a month. That's how I use it. Except to celebrate, like after I finished. Hang on one second. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Time to celebrate. That's right. Okay. I had to print these out to back these up. This is where I, f I put my finances first and foremost, is to uh, protect this stuff. So here's a print of, of the comics. You can buy these on Gumroad, digital, pay what you want, it's about a dollar. But like here's some of it. Okay. Here's the lunar desert, the one I was just showing. Lunar desert. Yeah, we're celebrating. We're celebrating the release of the lunar desert. We did it. I'm just flipping through this here. I should be showing it, huh? Even though it's upside down. Yeah, we got a lot of good stuff going here. This is important to have physical backups if you can. I am super paranoid about backing things up, absolutely, because there's hidden messages in these comics, yeah. Hidden messages. So we're celebrating, see? Look. Celebration. Celebrate. Uh, we did it. Completed it. And here's the back page. Silly stuff. There's no ego in it. There's no pride. No, I'm not trying to impress anybody. This is like Winnie the Pooh for um, adventure people. Here's. I don't know what I just said. Here's Denixia. <coughs> Demonstrations. So it's important to have physical backups. It's important if you're an artist, you must, if you really believe in what you're doing and you want to protect it, you must have, you must, must have a physical print on paper. Okay, this stuff is really awesome, but you can't only rely on it because if you do, those 1984 uh, robot people with eight eyes melting out of their face or whatever. Eight red eyes like the Terminator. Just glowing out of their face. Have you seen? I saw this video supposedly it got deleted. There was a, like a some person supposedly worked for the government. I think it was a, maybe a fake video but this guy was like sitting in front of like 19 computer screens that were curved and they were for some reason all black and white what they were there was no color in them you would think somebody uh like a high official government worker would have high definition surveillance they were all black and white fuzzy well anyway when this person was found their face started melting like candle wax and there were eight red glowing eyes just the face melted off fucking weird I don't know if it was true or not. I also saw a video of a guy whose eyes burned out of his head during a protest. They said it was a smoke grenade, but we know that's not what it was. Here was the previous comic. Nuclear Pumpkin Apocalypse. So anyway, yeah, we're celebrating. <coughs> Let's replay this really quick. He said we ran out of ammo. I'll just replay this really quick. <coughs> Alright, so here's this and the music. I was working on that. I should close this, huh? Save it, yes. I'm updating Infinity Wilderness. The sequel to Infinite Wilderness. This is gonna be hardcore. If it gets done, we're gonna see. I'm not pushing it. I'm not forcing it. I'm trying to be a bodhisattva. I'm trying to be as gentle as possible. The meek shall inherit the earth. 
And though these are fictional entertainment, they are also potentially psychokinetic magic weapons, if you believe in that sort of thing. So, do what thou wilt. I do believe in that principle. But make sure you know the, car the karma's real, there's karma consequences, so be careful how you use these uh, spell drives. Magic spell drives, that's what they are. They're digital magic spell drives. <sighs> Some of them, they can be, it depends. Depends on your level. Depends on how long you've been growing in this garden. How many times you've reincarnated. So let's just play this for a